Hello everyone. In today's video, I have a sew along for you. And this one is for my brand new beginners. So if you are just learning how to sew your own garments, this is an excellent project for you because it only requires one seam. Yes, you heard me right. We're only gonna be sewing a single seam up the center back of the dress. Also, you don't need a pattern because we're gonna be cutting the fabric based on our bust measurement. And of course, you'll take your length measurement to see how long you want your dress. Also, I'm gonna be talking about the undergarment because whenever I sew anything that is off the shoulder or strapless, I always get questions about the bra. So I'm gonna be talking to you about the uh, two different options. Actually, it's one option, but two different styles for the bra. And that's it. So it's gonna be a very simple project and I'm walking you through all of the steps. But here's what I want you to do before we get started. I want you to go and grab a copy of the sewing project checklist. It's a free PDF and there's a link in my description box for you to grab that. And the reason I want you to get that is because I want you to get everything, gather all of your supplies together in one place before we get started. Now I'm gonna show you what supplies or talk to you about the supplies that you need for sewing the dress, but I want you to have that together. And I'm also gonna to link to a video that I posted here on my YouTube channel that talks about the importance of gathering everything so, um, that you need for your projects for optimal timing for your, for your sewing. So go and grab that checklist and then let's get started. One more thing before I get started. For those of you who are part of my private email community, then you've already received an email with a list of all of the supplies that you will need for today's project. So hopefully you were able to gather everything you need to get started today. Now, for those of you who are not part of that community, then there is a link in my description box for you to join. It's free. And that's where I share all things that are going on with Anita by Design. Whenever I'm going to sh uh, post a new YouTube video here, then I'm shooting out the information to my email community first with all of the supplies you're going to need and any other pertinent information to prepare you for the sew along. And this is actually something new that I've started and I'm pretty excited about it. So tap the link below to get started. And now let's get into the sew along. Okay, let's talk about the supplies that you're gonna need for the project, starting with the fabric, because you're gonna need a special type of fabric to make the dress. It's a smocked fabric, it's pre-smocked, and I picked mine up from Joann's, my local Joann's, and it's a rayon chalet. So here is a look at the fabric. It's smocked on the top, and then it's just, it's left plain on the bottom. And I like the rayon chalet because of the drape. It has a really nice drape. And for this dress, I definitely wanted it to be drapey and flowy. So you can see here when I move it around and manipulate it, it does have a decent amount of drape. And here you can see a close up of the smocked area. So they use a technique called shearing to create the stretch in the fabric. It's also available in blue, at least it was at my local Joann's, and this creamy color, it's an off-white color. And this one is cotton, so if you prefer to use a cotton, then this one is, is a great option. However, the cotton doesn't have as much drape as the rayon. So you can see here when I move and manipulate this fabric, it's not as drapey as the other, but if, if you love to wear cotton, then this is a great option. You're going to need a yardstick and we're going to be using the yardstick to measure the cutting line or to draw the cutting line onto our fabric. We're not using a pattern, so we're going to be drawing our own lines onto the fabric. You can also use a tape measure to measure the length of your dress because you're gonna to have to measure how long you want your dress. And I'm gonna be using a seam gauge to measure the seam allowance. And we're gonna be using a one inch seam allowance for this project. You could also use your yardstick to measure your seam allowance or to measure the length of your dress. You're also going to need a marking tool. I'm going to be using my chalk roller and I really like using this to mark my fabric because it has this nice wheel that rolls along the fabric and dispenses chalk onto your fabric, which makes it so easy. If you don't have a chalk roller, you can use a chalk block. That's what I call these little chalk blocks. And it has a really narrow end right there, which makes a really straight line so you can use that if you don't have a chalk roller or you can use a fabric marker 
The, this one has a blunt tip. There are others that have different tips. It doesn't matter as long as you are using something that you can see when you're marking onto your fabric, okay? I'm gonna be using my rotary cutter to cut the fabric. This is my cutting tool of choice right now because it does such a great job. But if you're gonna use a rotary cutter, you must have a cutting mat because you don't wanna cut onto your tabletop surface and damage it. If you don't have a rotary cutter, then of course you can use your dressmaker shears. Just make sure that they are nice and sharp so that you get a nice clean cut. Then of course you're gonna need thread in a coordinating color or you can use a contrasting color, it's up to you. I'm using an all-purpose polyester thread that is just fine for this project. You're gonna need your straight pins because we're gonna be pinning the dress together and I'm gonna use the straight pins to determine where we're gonna place our stitching line. This is optional, but you can also use safety pins to pin your dress up before you draw the lines to see the, how it fits to determine the fit that you want. That's it. These are the supplies that we will be using to sew the dress. So gather everything that you need for the sew along and we're gonna get started. But first we're gonna talk about the undergarment because I always get the question about what type of bra I'm wearing whenever I make something that's off the shoulder or sleeveless. So I'm always wearing a strapless bra, but it is very difficult to find a bra that stays in place. I've not yet been able to find one, so if you find one, please let me know. So this is the one that I have always worn with my strapless garments, and it, it does a pretty good job. It does its job, but I'm always having to adjust it throughout the day. So I went out and purchased this bra. I wanted to try something different. I wanted something that was more straight across the top. And I also wanted a bra that does not have an underwire or silicone pads. And I'm always looking for a bra that has wide bands because I like more support. So this one has a wide band on the sides and at the center back where the hooks are. So this is good, I like that. It also has straps, so you can wear it for more than just a strapless bra. So there are the straps that come with it in the little plastic baggie. So I figured I would give this a try because for this particular dress, I wanted something straight across the front. So here is a close up of the bra on my dress form and when I put it on my body, I do like it. However, it does not stay in place. I did wear it out with my dress and I did have to adjust it throughout the day. But I do like the smooth fit. I do like that it's straighter across the top for this particular dress. It was very comfortable underneath because the underwire isn't there. And I don't have the silicone pad, so I didn't get that indentation when I was wearing the dress, which I did get with my other bra. So I love that. I love that it has the nice wide band that fits smooth on my body. So next we're going to measure the fabric on our bodies. So make sure that you're wearing the bra that you plan to wear with your dress and just position it the way you wanna wear it with the dress. Um, and then we're gonna take our fabric and measure it across our body. So here's my fabric. That's the cut that I received from the store and I did pre-wash it. So make sure that you pre-treat your fabric before you sew it. You wanna make sure that you get all of the shrinkage out of there before sewing it together. So we're gonna take the fabric and wrap it around our body from the back and you wanna make sure that the wrong side is facing out. Position it the way you want to wear it. I like to wear mine up higher because I like more coverage. So position it the way you want. Now you can see that my ruffles are folded inside. Make sure that your ruffles are, are out. Use a mirror. I didn't have a mirror. I was looking into the camera. So make sure you're standing in front of a mirror and the ruffles are out and just position that exactly where you want it. And then you're going to pull the dress across your chest to get the fit that you want. So 
stretch that fabric across your bust to get the fit you want and then just pinch your fingers whenever you get the fit you want. Checking it on the side, checking to make sure that you have the fit that you desire, okay? You wanna make sure that it's nice and snug. And then we're gonna pin. We're gonna pin the fabric on both sides to determine our stitching line. So take a straight pin and you wanna insert that pin on one side where your finger is, and then you're gonna take another pin and insert it on the other side where your thumb is, okay? And that's gonna be the stitching line. So make sure it's snug or make sure that it's the fit that you want, okay? If you are really curvy and your hips curve out a lot more and you're concerned that you're not gonna have enough room at the bottom, it's okay because of all of the gathers it gives you the extra room. So the gathering gives you extra room down on the bottom. And if you find that you're, you're not sure, use safety pins and pin all the way down. Pin it from the top all the way down to the bottom. You may need to get some help with that just to try it on first before you sew it. So after you have determined your stitching line, then we're gonna lay our fabric onto the cutting table with the wrong side facing up, okay? Wrong side facing up, and then we're gonna draw our lines or the single line from the top all the way down to the bottom. But before we can do that, we need to create a cutting line. So that's the stitching line where the black pin is, and then the white pin is my cutting line. So I took my seam gauge and measured out one inch or about one inch, you can see mine is a little bit over, to determine what my cutting line would be, and then I inserted a pin there. So you can see close up, that there is a, about a one inch difference. So before we draw in that line, we need to make sure that the fabric is flat. Because we have the gathers there, we need to open it out so that we will have a flat surface to, to place the, the yardstick for drawing the line. So go ahead and use your hand to open out the gathers and then just smooth that fabric down all the way from the gathered area down to the hem area. Okay, and once you have done that, then you can take your yardstick and you're gonna place the yardstick at the top where the cutting line pin is, okay? And if you feel like you need more room at the bottom, then just angle that out a little bit to the right. Not too much because you don't want a point at the center back seam on the bottom, but just a little, and making sure that you're opening out those ruffles, okay? I'm using a blue chalk roller so that you can see the line better, okay? So after you have determined your cutting area and placed your yardstick, just go ahead and draw in your cutting line from the top area where the shearing is all the way down to the bottom. And just take your time on this. You wanna make sure that you keep your finger placed securely on that yardstick so that you're not shifting the ruler while you're drawing the line in. And then once you get to the bottom of your yardstick, then just move it down, aligning the top part with the previous line, and then just continue drawing in your line. Now, remember, you will need to measure the length of your dress. So before you get to this part, you will need to determine how long you want your dress. I'm not cutting off anything. I'm just leaving mine as is, and then I will determine how much I wanna hem it when I'm done. Okay, so we have our line, and then we're gonna remove our pin, and then we're ready to cut. So I'm gonna be cutting using my rotary cutter from the bottom of the dress all the way up to the top. And the reason I'm going, I'm cutting from the bottom is because I wanna to go toward the ruffles. I wanna go up toward the ruffles so that I can open them out when I get to that area. So continue cutting. If you're using your dressmaker shears, you can do the same thing. So when you're getting up toward the ruffles, open them out to make sure you're not cutting in folds. So you see how I'm opening opening that fabric out, that's to make sure that I'm not cutting any folds. I want a nice straight line, okay? So go ahead and do that and detach any parts that stick. The, my two areas that are sticking are where my mats are connected. I have three mats connected together, okay? So you're gonna do this on both sides of the fabric. So go ahead and draw in your line on the other side 
and then you will be ready to go to the next step, which is pinning. So in, in order to pin it together, you're going to lay your fabric with the right side facing up and then fold it over onto itself. So you're gonna have the right sides facing each other and then you're gonna pin your dress together. And we're gonna start in the smocked area. So with your right sides facing, we wanna start where the smocking and the gathers meet because we wanna make sure that that is nice and even. We don't want that off because that wouldn't look good. So insert your pin, making sure that the smocking ends in the same place on both sides. And then go up to the top and pin those ruffles together, making sure that they're nice and even along that top edge. And then continue pinning using as many pins as you need for control at the machine, keeping those raw edges even. Then we're gonna go down and continue pinning the rest of the dress all the way down to the hem. And once you have pinned the dress together, we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna be sewing our seam from the bottom all the way up to the top. I like to start at the bottom to make sure that the hem is gonna be even so that when we fold up our hem, everything is, is right. And once we reach the smocked area, we're gonna stop and change over to a zigzag stitch. So remove that pin, lift your needle out of the fabric, and then change to a narrow zigzag stitch. We're using a 2.5 stitch length and a 0.5 stitch width. And we're gonna start back in with a back stitch and then continue stitching from that point all the way up to the top of the dress, making sure that you're keeping your raw edges even. And when you reach the top area, you wanna make sure that the ruffles at the top are nice and even. So open those out in the area where you're gonna be sewing and sew all the way up to the top to make sure that you have a nice, even, clean finish on the top. And then once you reach the top of the ruffle, you're going to back stitch to end that stitch. And now our stitch is complete. Just one stitch to put the dress together. And there you have it down on the, with the straight stitch. Now you can choose to finish off your seam however you like. I'm using my Baby Lock Vibrant Serger to finish off my seam allowance. So do whatever seam allowance finish you desire, but you do wanna finish off your seam allowance to make sure that it looks nice on the inside, okay? So there you have it. And now we're gonna go to the pressing station and the first thing we're gonna do is press that seam flat just to seal in all of the threads and to make that seam nice and pretty. So use your press cloth to protect your fabric and just use your steam to press that down nice and flat. Continue pressing all the way up the length of your dress and your the smocking area. Next, we're gonna open the dress out over our ironing board 
and then we're going to press that seam to one side. It doesn't matter which side. You just want to make sure that you're pressing it to one side. Now, when you get into the area where the gathering is, I'm going to use the seam roll and I want to do that to make sure that I'm opening out the gathers to press to press that area nice and flat. Okay, so you can see I'm using my press cloth, but I'm gonna open out those gathers first to make sure that I'm not folding in any extras. And I'm gonna use the tip of my iron, okay? So I'm using the tip of my iron, not the whole sole plate, just the tip of the iron for that area. And then when I continue pressing the smocked area, then I'm just gonna pull that, that uh, seam roll out and continue sewing or continue pressing using the sole plate of the iron. Now, before we hem the dress, you wanna make sure that you try it on to check the length. So I had determined I probably wouldn't need to hem the dress, but I absolutely do because as you can see, it's dragging the ground. And when I walk, that would be uncomfortable and I could trip on the dress, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> if I step backwards, then it's, it's dragging the floor. So I'm definitely going to hem it and I decided on a one inch hem. So I used my seam gauge and measured up one inch. So you will have to determine how much of a hem you're going to sew into your dress. So use your seam gauge or your yardstick if you don't have that, measure up an inch, or you can even eyeball it and press in your hem allowance all the way around your dress, all the way around the bottom of your dress. And then after you've done that, you will go back to your sewing machine and sew the hem in place, starting and ending with a back stitch. And there, our dress is all done. And here is a look at the finished project. And I like it. It's very comfortable. I like the flowiness of the skirt. I like the fit on the top. My, I made my dress to wear as a house dress, so I will be wearing it mostly inside the house. I may wear it out to the grocery store, but it's mostly for me to lounge around the house because I like to be comfortable. Or you can wear it as a swimsuit cover up. This looks really nice. I will definitely take this to the beach or to the pool to wear as a swimsuit cover up. So you can wear it for that reason or whatever reason you want to wear it for. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this sew along. If so, I want you to do three things for me. First, I want you to hit that like button and you can do that right now. Just hit the like button. Next, I want you to leave me a comment in the comment section below the video. If you enjoyed the sew along, let me know in the comments or if you have a question you can ask because I do come back and answer questions. And then finally, share the video. If you have a sewing friend or a group of sewing friends, then hit the share button down below and share it out with them. One more thing before I go, if you love Jesus and sewing, then check out my new merch. Actually, I, it's not new, it's about a year or two old, but anyway, I have a Shopify store where you can purchase your sewing merch. And this is one of my most popular um, designs there. Give me Jesus and a sewing machine. So go check it out. There is a link in the description box below and I will see you guys next time. Bye. You've been inspired, you've been encouraged, you've watched other women sew their own garments, and you've said to yourself, I want to learn how to sew. Who's going to teach me? Well, I have exactly what you need. An online sewing course called Learn to Sew, Mastering the Basics, where I teach you, the new beginner, the person who has never even touched a sewing machine before, how to sew your own garments. And what's special about my course is I take you from beginning to end, start to finish, step by step with lots of details so that you don't get lost in the process. In this course, I teach you 
what type of needle to use based on your fabric choice. You will learn how to use the different cutting tools for your projects and how to sew a proper stitch based on the fabric that you're using. We take you into the fabric store and show you how to choose your fabrics and what happens at the cutting table when you purchase your fabric. You will learn how to lay out your pattern pieces onto your fabric and how to cut into that fabric for success. And of course, we show you how to use a sewing machine from beginning to end. This and so much more is waiting for you inside of my course, Learn to Sew, Mastering the Basics. Tap the link in the description box to get started.